and we're today we're going to start and end with Schumann. I'll tell you a little bit about Schumann. He was born in 1810 and he died in 1856, so he only lived about 46 years. He was composing before the age of seven. At the age of 20, he went and studied piano with Professor Week. He later married his daughter, Clara Schumann, who became a virtuoso world touring concert pianist with a career of 60 years. Unfortunately, he didn't live long enough to see that grand success that she had, but he certainly saw a lot of it for a long time. Now, Robert had a dream of being a virtuoso, but after one year of lessons, his one of his fingers was crippled by a device that was used to equalize the, st the finger strength. And uh, my teacher, Mr. Browning, had a, a, a replica of this device in the studio, because his teacher was Clara Schumann's best, stu best student. So it was this plastic, weird plastic device, and it had like a, like a, um, con uh, a little container for each of the fingers. So you just put it in, and then it stretches it out like this. It was it was a pretty scary contraption. But within a year, he crippled one of his fingers. Um, nonetheless, he he did keep composing, and he was very active um, from the time that he was about 23 to to 43. Now. Professor Week had a real problem with Robert marrying his daughter Clara because he had been teaching her too and, and wanted to protect uh, her career. One of the problems was that he was diagnosed with what they called um, diseased brain at the age of 23. So that, that was a big problem in terms of that. But Robert went to court and he battled and fought real hard and finally the, the court allowed him to marry her uh, to marry Clara. In Opus 68, which we'll hear first today, it's from the album of the young, and he says, Robert says, it gave me indescribable joy to compose these miniatures. And I'm going to tell you something else he said. But first I want to remind you that he wrote these at the age of 38. He had already composed his quartets, most of his piano literature, his orchestra, symphonies. It was, he had done most of his major works at the time that he worked, worked on these little, these little miniatures. And he's, what else he says, as he composed these, he said, I felt as if I were beginning composition all over again. The album for the young is distinctly different from scenes of childhood. Album for the young, um, he calls it the anticipations and experiences of young people. One through eight would be the young folk and 19 through 43 he said these would be for the kids that are on their way to becoming grown-ups. Whereas what we're going to hear later today from scenes of childhood, these are from a different perspective. And we'll find out more about that later. So we're doing number one from the album from the young in the beginning of today, today's class. And then we're doing number one of the Opus 15, scenes from childhood. So we'll start with Jared and um, he's going to play the melody.
thank you, thank you. Um, are you using pedal, Jared? Uh, a little bit, not much. Is this an echoey room? Yes. <clears throat> I would think that, uh, let's see how we can work with the pedal a little bit. Um, I love the phrasing. There's just a, a few little technical things that I think would make it a little bit better. Uh, from what I'm hearing here, it sounds really like like you're flooding the music with the with the pedal. Um, and uh, can can um, the, can we start where the the fifth bar where you start having the pause on the fourth beat? Sure. Yeah. Um, just I would not have any pedal going there because that. It, that there's there's a pause there, so there's three counts of quarter notes and then no sound from the right hand. So the the pedal has to go up if you're going to be using the pedal. Can we try just those two bars there? Sure. Okay. So you picked up your hand. Um, can you do it again, Jared? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I like that a lot better. It's cleaner. It sounds it sounds cleaner to me. So, right, right. So I would definitely do that. Um, very, very. That was that sounded altogether a whole lot better. Um, and looking at the skeleton of the piece, the melody in the right hand is. So in Schumann's music, and at that time, one of the things Clara talked about a lot was making sure you're bringing out the melody and let and make sure that's very crisp and clear and not to cloud things up with um, too many notes that aren't part of the melody. Good, 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 good. Um, the G's, um, I, I think we should bring it, uh, not bring it out quite so much in the second measure. Um, now the G comes after. It's way too loud. Uh... 
Um, you want to do one more run through and um, of the piece, just kind of putting a few of these suggestions in. Just remember that whenever you have that G octave where you're coming on the higher G on the downbeat, the G before it, let that be the end of that little, the half part of that phrase. Let that disappear a little bit more. Okay, it happens one, two, the end of the second line, three, three at the, on the bottom line. There's several. Yeah, all right. Okay. Very nice, very nice. So now we, we picked it apart a little bit. I love I love playing with this with this one. It's a simple melody, but and but but if we do too much with it, then it's an overkill. Um, so we we put a few of these measures under a microscope, and we're right now we're kind of exaggerating some of the ideas. So now let's try one more time, Jared. Think for a moment. We, you know, realize and we can't do a rubato more than once, you know, we can't do it that often. Right now we're getting them every two measures or so. So think about um, where the important ones are in each four bar phrase, or if you want to do longer phrases, think about what the most important one of them is in the, uh, in the eight bar phrases. You want to talk about it or you just want me to play? Well, do you want to think about it for a moment? I am thinking. I mean, I think that the, uh, the tritone is definitely one. Um, you know, maybe the way to do it is, you know, because there, even though there's not a repeat, like there's still, there's the four bar melody and then it repeats. And then there's the B section, you know, the B theme, and then that repeats, and then it's the four bar melody again. So maybe um, one of the tritones should be a rubato, but maybe the second one. Yeah, the second tritone. And you know, you can never go wrong by going for the highest note. There's two times where we hit the highest note, the A. You can never go wrong by putting, put, using a little rubato on the high note. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, that, that, that's what the ear, you know, always expects. And it's not a complicated melody. That would that, probably, be, probably be my choice on this one at least today. <laughs> Here goes. Let's let the, let's just let the emotions tell the fingers what to do there and see what happens.
Bravo. I love that. It, you know, when you played it this way, I could tell where you were in the piece, if you were in the beginning, the middle, or the end. So that, I, I really like the way that pulled together. A little more cohesive. What? A little more cohesive like that. Well, you know, we, we picked it apart quite a bit. You know, so then that then we have to decide which of those things are the most important each time that it comes up. Okay, that, that sounded great. That sounded great. And it's whether you're doing pedal or not, it, 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 it sounded a, a lot better. I just left the pedal off entirely. Oh, good idea. Yeah. I, I mean, I actually don't have any pedal markings in my part. You know, usually, I didn't even think about it, but usually Schumann, every piece of his just says pedal in the beginning, and there's not usually individual pedal markings. It usually just says pedal, and you figure use it liberally, and I didn't even bother to look on this one, but it doesn't say that, so. Right, right. I don't think he means to pedal it and, and just keep it down the whole time, though. No, no, but it means, liberal, you know, liberal, liberal use of it. Sure, sure, sure. All right, good. Let's go to our next performer. And today we have Judy. She's working on a piece for church and is going to play this with a recording. Very nice. Good. Good, Judy. How do you feel about it? Well, it's up to that flat I made instead of the sharp on that one piece. One yeah, piece. yeah, yeah. I thought it was very good. And you did something. You, I know you've been working on the rhythm with syncopation. And you did something here where you played the notes a little short. Mm -hmm. That I haven't heard you experiment with that before. Uh, that's a, I think it's a great way to keep you on track because you can hear the other person more. You can hear the beat more, and I would suggest that you practice it whenever you're practicing with the, the piano accompaniment. Do it one time with the little short notes, and that'll also show you what part of the bow you want to be in as well. Okay. Yes, I thought it was very good. I don't have too much to say about it. Um, just that I think it was a real good idea to do that.
to just make the notes shorter in duration. You don't change the rhythm, you just put a little space between the notes so you can hear when each note is starting and see that it, synchroni that it synchronizes. I, th I do, I do. I think one more lesson, we'll go over it again, and it, I think you're ready to go. He's going to be out of town next week, so he wants to do it this week. This week? Tomorrow? Yeah. Tomorrow? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Well, um, then I would suggest that you, you have the recording um, with the slower tempo with the piano. I would do it, I would do it with that. Um, and with the faster tempo, maybe like if you were breaking your practice in half and half, half with the recording, half without the recording, the, the ones with the recording, I would do it maybe, you know, 30 out of the 30% 30, 30 out of that 50% and then to 20% up to tempo, you know. What about the intonation? There is a little, it got a little sharp there. So definitely a lot of soul practice if you're going to do it tomorrow. Might be better to wait, um, wait two weeks until he gets back uh, because your vibrato starting to kick in. I heard a really beautiful vibrato at your last, last couple times I saw you. And it might develop more because you, you, you're, you, you, it, it might develop more by that time. Is that an option, Judy? I don't know. I'll call him and find out. Okay. Tell me your manager is suggesting maybe you could wait two more weeks. Maybe I can do a piano piece tomorrow. What? Maybe I can do a piano piece tomorrow and a violin piece next, next Sunday. Yeah, you can do that too. All right, good. Good job, Judy. And we have next, um, we have next Connor. And, oh, let's open up that piano. Would you like to announce your piece, Connor? Okay, it's Marzuka by Peter Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky? <laughs> what? I don't know. It's so hard. It's many letters. Well, you know, Chicago is a city that has a lot of big, huge statues of cows everywhere. And the musicians in Chicago say, they say Tchaikovsky. Okay. So whenever you're ready. I just have, I'm going to have you play it one more time, Connor. Um, you have your music in front of you. At the end of the first page, um, before you play the first note of the next page, I would not rush into that. It sounded, it sounded like you ended that phrase and went to the next one a little bit too fast. And that would help a little bit with the shaping. 
Um, can we do the last two measures, to pick up to the last two measures of the first page? On the D. more time with the whole piece and be careful on the second page when you have the sforzandos you're rushing a little bit just kind of catch your breath don't get too excited there they'll slow down of course just just watch out there and I think you want to push push your piano back your bench back a little bit that sounded great. So we won't do that in the middle of the piece, but I liked it just there. Um, now put your knees where they need to be under the key bed. Yeah. Uh, so that you're forward, come forward more on the bench. So that your sitting bones are in the front half of the bench. Let me get a camera view. Say something so I can see you better. Um, there we go. Yeah, I think it, move it back a little bit more. Yeah, I think that's a better spot. So your, your tush should be on the front end of the bench, not in the middle. Like here's the bench and there's the piano. You're all the way using this much of the bench for yourself. I would just get on the front end of that more. There you go. Doesn't that feel better like when you're pedaling? Yeah, nothing wrong with that. You want to try it again now? section coming up but it lets the listener know something different is going to happen and something different does happen you've got one two three four sforzandos coming up real soon after that and that, that really set up I think that really set us up for that excellent pedaling Connor excellent pedaling very good use of pedaling all right good 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 let's go to our next performer thank you Connor so we're going to end today with another Schumann. So in the first album, in the, in the Opus 68 album, it was the anticipation and experiences of young people. In this album, that, that the Opus 15, he says it's the reminiscence of an older person. And by the way, he labeled these pieces. They're, they're, the pieces all have pretty descriptive labels, except that last one we saw just said melody.
but generally the, the, the descriptions are very descriptive and he labeled them after he composed them for the intention of helping the musician uh, with some ideas about how to interpret it. So Jared, you want to tell us the name of the first one that you're playing? Uh, well, my, uh, my German is not good, but I think it uh, means of strange lands and people. Thank you for not doing the German. <laughs> of strange lands and people. Foreign lands and people. That's another translation. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's hear it. Oh, wait, wait, one second. There's, okay, I have my worksheet copy. All right. You ready? Yes. Lovely. Very, very nice. Very nice. Um, very good. I'm going to show you some my copy of this. Supposedly it was edited by Claire Schumann. It's hard to know, but anyway, take a look at these um, pedal marks. Oh, yeah. And I put little hairpins in there because it kind of makes sense. Yeah, I see the pattern. Yeah, now this is not this is not a pedal mark. This is a bringing it out. I can't see that one at the bottom. Da da dum in the bass line. There's a little red mark. Yeah, I see that. You see the bracket? Yeah. Yeah. And so let's, uh, most important would be to see that those hairpin pedaling marks are especially honored. You can even get away with hardly any pedal in that room you're in. That's kind of an advantage, I think. You also want to work on the Fermata bar today, just for a couple minutes. You know, I'm okay. glad that you said bar, I don't, I don't feel it. I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't get it. So I'm glad <laughs> Let's see if we can get, let's see if we can work on that. Maybe, maybe you'll feel better about it later. Um, could we do the first line? Um, well, you could do the first two lines, adding, you know, doing the pedaling that's, that you saw in my part. All right, so we'll just now, you don't have to do the hairpins. The hairpins right. are going to happen naturally because the line goes up and comes back down. Gotcha. You're right. I put I put the hairpins in there to show you what the pedal is going to do for you. You don't have to do it with your fingers. It all it can all happen with the pedal there. Okay. Yeah. 
I was super clean. Yeah, because I didn't need to tell at all. <laughs> Great, 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 great. It feels a lot better that way. Yeah, I'm glad you like it. And you know, it brings out the dotted rhythm too. pauses are. So you have a retardando uh, marked the measure before. And that's the thing we got to be careful with. Because if it's too much, the whole thing is going to lose shape. Yeah, it just falls off the rails. That's right. <laughs> Fall right off the rails. So um, you have the fermata on the second beat. And then on the uh, the last, the and of two. So you have it in two hands, and then you have it in one hand just before the end of the bar. So I would end the phrase there. And Wait, then, da da um, bum one. What? In two fermatas? I have the one in both, both hands at the same time, but that's the only one I have. Uh-oh. Okay, take a look. There's another one. That's why you... I don't have the vertex with me. Oh, I don't have that. Yeah, that's not marked here. On the D. Yep. That's why you, well, that's why you heard me doing that. The vertex is in Kuwait. I don't have it here. Oh, shit. Got it. So, can we start that line, the, the E, F, G, A, B, and then holding D, and just end it there. And don't play the pick up to the next part. Let's work out the, the fermatas and the phrasing without the pick up, okay? Just take that out of the picture for a moment. See? So you got to make some sense of that. Yeah, yeah, I see. It's different. It totally changes it. I would wait till the F sharp to start the retardando. Yes! I like that. That's, I think I like that a lot. Do I do it again? No wonder, it makes a lot more sense with the formato there. Thank you, Clara. Yeah. I mean, and the rumor is that Clara um, put her little additions on this. You know, put she, she worked on this as well and put a few things in. It's probably her concert version or something. What? It's probably her concert version. I don't know. I don't know, but I like it. Let's do it again, and we'll put it together. All right, from the same spot, the E, F? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's good, good, very good. You want to play the whole piece all the way through um, one more time, then we'll end up for today? 
Okay. Lovely. Very beautiful. Thank you. So I think that's it for today. And unless anybody has any questions or comments. Should we all unmute everybody and see if anybody wants to talk about anything? And a couple. Sorry? In a couple weeks. See, in a couple weeks. I had some thoughts that we were starting to talk about a few weeks ago about learning music and listening to other versions of it while we're learning. And uh, perhaps next, in a couple weeks, I'll share more about my, my thoughts about that. And I hope you all are thinking about it as well, especially you, Wayne. And um, because you've been, th you've been through a longer journey with music than I have, actually. And it might be, you might have some interesting insights um, if you've ever learned something organically without ever hearing it first and comparing it. I think it would be lovely to hear from you about that. Sure. All right, wonderful. Well, it's, um, thank you everybody for coming. Um, just so you know, I guess I'm gonna make a little announcement that the third uh, Saturday classes are now being taken over by the person who is hosting the first. It's the other way around. Oh, did I do it? Yeah, I'm a little tired today. The first is being taken over by the Right. Okay. All right, great. Thank you all for coming. And we'll see you in two weeks. Stay safe and stay strong. The gyms are open. <laughs> Woohoo! I've been twice this week. I feel like Superwoman. <laughs>